Welcome back to another episode of the Dig Deep, the Mining Podcast. And we've reached another milestone. This is our 300th episode. Um, we've come so far since we started back in November 2018. So I want to thank all the guests that have appeared on the show um, and all the listeners and the mining community for your support and encouragement on this journey. And obviously, we couldn't have produced uh, this podcast without you. So I thank, really thank all your, um, all your help and all your... Um, um, obviously, listen to every episode um, and obviously your continued support. So today we have a, a special guest, Neil Froman, who's the CEO of Siberian Steelwater, who are a multinational mining and metals processing company with a diverse um, portfolio of mining and processing operations and projects and investments across five continents. They've established themselves as one of the li li largest primary producers of platinum, palladium and rhodium and he's also a top tier gold producer and have recently moved into battery minerals. Neil, Neil has a wealth of experience in the industry, working for the likes of Goldfield, Harmony Gold, Gold One and Uranium One during his career before taking the helm of CEO at Stabanian Steelwater. He's, he was um, appointed executive director in 2020 and also serves as the vice president of the Minerals Council of South Africa. So in a special 300th edition, I want to get to know Neil a little bit more, uh, what he's achieved, his vision, his wisdom, and the journey of Sotbanian still water and what the future holds for them. So that's welcome, Neil, to the podcast. How are you doing, Neil? Yeah, thanks, uh, Robin, and thanks for hosting me today. And uh, congratulations on delivering your, your 300th uh, podcast. Um, that's a very appropriate time for us as well. Uh, to be having this interview. Um, as, as you know, uh, Sabanya Stillwater, or Sabanya, before it became Sabanya Stillwater, was spun out of Goldfields in 2013. So next year will be our 10th anniversary. And, and just to correct something you said, I've been a, an executive director since uh, the creation of uh, Sabanya uh, in 2000. 13, so not uh, since 2020. Um, that, that might have just been a slip of the tongue. Eh? Yeah, sorry about that. Uh, thank you for obviously correcting me. So as we always start these podcasts off, and I know the audience likes this part of the show, um, I wonder if you can just tell us a little bit about your, your career, your background, uh, maybe some things that people don't actually know about yourself um, before I go into uh, more questions. Yeah, so so I'm actually a, a mechanical engineer and I have a, a financial um, qualification as well. <laughs> I've, I've been in mining all my life. Um, um, I enjoy um, um, fast cars, fast planes, uh, fast boats. Uh, I enjoy working with my hands. I do uh, uh, long range uh, shooting. So uh, anything more than a, a kilometer is considered long range. Um, that's a particular uh, um, hobby of mine at the moment. And then uh, I, I also have a soft side. I enjoy uh, music. Um, I try and play the keyboards and drums. So um, I know that's uh, quite unusual for uh, someone in the mining industry. But I think as we as we go through and, and talk about our company, you will see there's a, a very significant soft side to it as, as well. So... I can, uh, Rob, if okay with you, I can I can just run through my career and and um, and some of the things that were important to me. So my uh, career in, in mining started from humble origins and has been, I would say, an enthralling at times uh, testing journey that forged my perspective on on the world of mining uh, as it is today. And um, let me start from when I was a student. In my last few years of study doing uh, vacation work, it was at that point that I first learned some very valuable life lessons um, that have that have stuck with me um, and guided me uh, through throughout my entire career. And many of these things um, will probably seem as buzzwords today, but you will see how um, how these things have. Um, um, you know, informed uh, the way I manage anyway. Um, and it, it was while I was doing a vacation job on the mines um, to supplement my Goldfields bursary income 
um, that I learned some of these things. And, and as I say, they've stuck with me throughout uh, my career. And, and it really started as uh, an ex inexperienced 20-year-old. I was given the responsibility to act as a foreman uh, for a few days over the festive season. And, and that was an unbelievably um, life-changing experience as a young man. Um, it was only a very small section that I had to look after, um, but I experienced the benefit of being empowered. And, um, and, and, and the fact that somebody trusted me to lead other people at a very young age has always stuck in my mind. And, um, and, and even today, I'm, I'm, I can see that situation and I know how it felt and it stayed with me throughout my life uh, and the joy of seeing people under me flourish uh, in the in the right environment uh, is is what what drives me and i often introduce myself not as the chief executive officer but as the chief enabling officer because i try and create these type of environments in a in a responsible um way um and uh, I, I must tell you that that uh, far from everything in my career having been plain sailing, it's uh, um, I've in fact had to work through some very tough challenges, and um, I would I would go as far as saying that those challenges um, have um, actually molded me much more than the the successes, and that's uh, that was another um, life learning experience uh, over many years. Um, is is learning from from those tough times um and learning how to to adapt um you know from those challenges um and 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 the example that i often use is i did not stay with goldfields who had given me the bursary um and it wasn't because um they were a bad company but it was the next it was the next lesson and and when i mention what i'm going to say now You'll 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 see what I mean about buzzwords. But I left because I realised that, uh, in a way, I did not have the right school tie. I went to a very normal school. Um, my my parents had to work hard to help me through university. I had a I had a bursary, but I I didn't go to a school that uh, you know was one of those schools uh, that most of the senior managers uh, had been to, and um, um, and and. <sighs> That that to me often meant that that management was an exclusive club uh, for for men that that came from private uh, uh, school backgrounds and and I felt excluded even though I was reasonably successful I felt excluded excluded and and that that experience even at a young age has driven my passion uh, for diversity and inclusivity which. As I say, when I mention those words, they, you know, those are the buzzwords of of today, um, and they are so relevant uh, in the modern world. But they were relevant at you know when I started my career, um, you know, forty years ago, and um, and I also see it as my duty to create an environment where people from different backgrounds, with different characteristics and different thinking patterns, can work together to create. Uh, robust plans and solutions to. I dare say that um, you know creating that empowering background, um, you know, promoting teamwork, promoting inclusivity, promoting diversity has has been a very very big part of uh, our success at Sabania Stillwater. So so after those early experiences, I joined. Um, Gencore and then Harmony and uh, and later JCI, which doesn't really exist today. And I was essentially responsible for turning around the acquisitions specifically in Harmony um, that resulted in, in Harmony being what it is uh, roughly today. And um, I acquired the, the monkeyer, Mr. Fixit, uh, from veteran journalist uh, Martin Kramer. Uh, for my turnaround successes in the 1990s, and and those um, those successes are, let's call it learning the business of mining and 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 what we apply in our business uh, uh, today, and 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 it's good to reflect on 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 the key ingredients of a recipe to turn around 
um, companies. And uh, it's not a complex formula. It's very logical. It's very commercial. Um, but the first thing I want to say, and again, it's a, it's a theme that you'll see um, coming through. Um, and the first thing is you can't do any of this on your own. Um, and I was, I positioned myself as a playing uh, team captain, and we often relate to sport in the way we, we describe leadership. And, um, and of course, uh, acknowledging that there was a, there was a bigger team doing it. Um, and, and as I learned from when I'd been trusted to act as a foreman in charge of a small section, I prize the value of a trusted team. And, and the second thing is that it involves people becoming motivated again. Often, uh, an asset underperforms because people become demoralized. Perhaps they were treated badly or they had very significant challenges and, and ultimately they ended up being losers. And, um, and, and we understood, um, especially at Harmony, we developed what we call the Harmony Way as an approach to mining. And we didn't profess to break rock any better than anyone else. But what we did do is we understood the business of mining we knew when there were too many people, when resources were not being mined optimally and when cost structures uh, were wrong. And, um, you know, we assume and and uh, accept you have to do the right technical things, but you must make people successful too. You only can be successful through people. Um, you can't be successful just through uh, focusing on technical issues. So it's, it's a logical process, as I've said. Um, but it starts with people and um, you have to instill confidence. You have to put people on a pedestal and you've got to make them important. In fact, we talk about um, people being the most important assets in our business, although I don't like to refer to people as assets, but I, I don't know how to describe it uh, or, or create the importance any better than uh, you know saying that they are our most important assets. Um, and then... Um, as you referenced in your introduction, I've been uh, a CEO from uh, the early 2000s. Um, I, I started uh, as a CEO of a publicly listed company in 2003 with Athlete's Gold, which became Gold One. You referred to Gold One. And uh, we also created a business called Uranium One, one of the biggest uranium companies in the world from the Athlete's uranium assets. And... Um, and and we did go through a, a rough patch with that, um, and and that was mainly due to the the uranium market uh, um, tanking after uranium reached one hundred and forty odd dollars a pound. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, in two thousand and thirteen, um, Sabanya Gold was born, where when I volunteered to lead the process of independently listing a subsidiary company which housed three of uh, Goldfields mature South African gold mine. So that, uh, that's just a, a, a quick recap of um, my experience and some of the, the things that have been important to me in terms of my management style and so on. Yeah, thank you for that. Um, just want to give us an overview of, of uh, Sabine and Stillwater and also what the recipe of success has been for the company um, because obviously you've you, you've built the company and it's grown quite significantly. So I just wanted to just give us an overview of the company and, and the recipe for success. Yeah, um, certainly. So so let me let me start with uh, with the name and uh, and what it means because uh, as as you see yourself, Rob, it's a mouthful to 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 actually say the word Sabanya, but. Uh, it, it gives you an idea of, of um, again, how we think. So, so when when we spun out these these, well, when Goldfield spun them out and we took on the responsibility of managing them, we were told to uh, we could choose a name, we could um, effectively uh, appoint a board. Um, we we had carte blanche uh, uh, with the branding and and so on. So so we chose a name called Sibanya, which. Uh, means we are one and again you're going to see this this um this this reoccurring theme of one in in the names of the companies that uh, that I have established and built and and what and 
and it's uh, Sibanya is Kosa. It's a it's a local dialect, uh, and it means we are one. Um, so I suppose the the one expresses an ethos of all stakeholders working towards common goals and sharing in their success that is generated through a concerted effort. It's um, it's actually only recently also been pointed out to me um, how appropriate uh, this brand is since the word one appears in the middle of my surname. And, and I only realized that uh, or it was pointed out to me uh, quite recently. And I guess it's another of those cases of, of nominative determinism. Um, and at Sabanya Gold, it was, um, it was again transformation time or to, to paraphrase somebody that's well known uh, in the mining circles, Ali Cog, a well-respected business commentator and investment analyst in South Africa, he pointed out that the mining contrarian was perceiving values where others uh, only saw problems. Um, I brought along several of my original Harmony, Uranium One and Gold One team members uh, into the Sabanya leadership team. And we implemented those same turnaround concepts that I spoke of earlier uh, with a view um, of improving and breathing new life into these mature South African gold operations. And, and as uh, I'm sure most of the audience will know, they're the, the deepest gold mines uh, in the world. They've um, Some of them have produced over 100 million ounces. So these are... These are really high quality assets, but really difficult um, to run. And the potential was there all along, and it just needed to be liberated through that enabling leadership that I spoke about. And um, we turned around the gold assets. Um, these are these are assets that today still produce over a million ounces from uh, Driefontein, Kloof, and Beatrix. Um, and um, we established ourselves as a leading dividend payer um, off the base of these assets and, and a leading dividend payer in gold. Um, the gold industry has uh, has generally not been good dividend payers, so it was not too difficult for us to take a lead in that uh, respect. But we also ensured we had a solid base and, um, and um, the sustainability to do what uh, came next. So, so you and your listeners would also know that it's not easy for a company, a gold company, to suddenly become something else. Uh, you know, I suppose that the, the 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 term pivoting is is often used, and many many companies in the industrial uh, sector pivot into other types of businesses. But in in mining, it's frowned upon when you pivot from gold into PGMs or, uh, you know, even uh, now into battery metals. But we we um, we we developed a shareholder base on the basis that dividends were sacrosanct, and it really didn't. We were almost commodity agnostic, and um, we therefore looked into where we could use our. Uh, um, let's say our, our competitive skills, which were really um, underground mining, and we developed a, a four-step uh, uh, strategy or journey to building a, a leading presence in platinum uh, PGMs or platinum group metals, um, which uh, is really the base uh, of our business today. So that that journey then started in 2016. So three years after. Uh, Sabanya Gold was created. We now started entering the the PGM business, uh, and it was at a low. And of course, uh, um, you know, in hindsight, uh, um, we look uh, we look really good in terms of the timing. Um, but we we did it in a in a responsible way. We did think it was a a, a low. We didn't realize it would be the absolute low uh, at the time, um, and we had to ensure that we could buy these marginal assets and not bleed the company to death and um, and managing the risk of that was was very important and we were successful and a year later we bought the Stillwater mining company in the United States and Stillwater is the biggest primary producer of palladium in the world um the the uh, Norilsk nickel produces more palladium than we do but it's a byproduct we are the biggest primary producer of uh, palladium 
And then, of course, uh, probably the most controversial transaction that we've done is we acquired Lonman in 2019. And as uh, you know, many of you will know, um, the Morikana disaster um, was a Lonman, um, let's say, tragedy as well. And um, but it's probably been our most uh, uh, successful acquisition in that literally Lonman pays for itself every few months now, uh, and we have been able to address the the tragic uh, issues that caused the the Morikana tragedy. It's a long journey, but we've made um, we've made good progress. So the, these were very well timed entry points and. We've, we built a business with 10 times the market capitalization of the original gold business. Um, and from the, for the past uh, four years, our earnings are dominated by the contribution uh, from PGMs. Um, we also felt that uh, the, the platinum industry at the time was kowtowing to the unions and, and the government. South Africa is a, a, a tough destination to work in. And we don't um, we don't try and um, tell everyone that it's easy. But what we what we do like to tell everyone is we know how to prosper in that environment, and and I think our results reflect that. Um, and um, and we certainly felt that we could uh, be better operators than the 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 companies uh, the operators that we bought those uh, companies from. Um, and and it's about being credible. It's not necessarily about friendly relationships where you have um, radical uh, unions. Um, you can't be friendly. You have to be firm and uh, fair. And, and that's, uh, that's the type of relationship we, we have in South Africa. Our, our relationships with unions in the U.S. where they are mature uh, is very good um, and, and, in fact, far more friendly. And, and some of these things were the key factors which allowed us to very successfully acquire these, um, these non-core assets from other platinum com companies, um, addressing the, the perceived risks um, um, from existing PGM producers. And, and you know, you can't, um, as I say, it's a, you, you, you only really create value in circumstances where you can do it much better than than others, and this is a, a classic example of that. And 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 again, I want to say I don't believe that we can break rock better than any of those operators. But in terms of understanding uh, the business, the stakeholders, uh, the environment, and and doing the right things, that's what we 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 do do well. But of course, um, <laughs> it comes with uh, criticism as well, you know, because you've seen as quite. Uh, um, you know, hostile in a way. And and David Mackay, who you would know well from, he's the publisher of Mining MX, uh, a leading South African mining publication, has written that I split opinion. And and as David put it, I irk the hell out of people with my outspokenness. Um, but we're not here to, to build the popularity stakes. Uh, we're here to run a business and, and look after and create value for all um, stakeholders. So um, I'm not really interested in being politically correct, and um, I'm always prepared to confront issues uh, that are destroying value and what's right is right and what's wrong is wrong. Um, and, and not only that, I think being politically correct, especially in South Africa, uh, creates a confusing message um, because you're beating around the bush. So, uh, um, and I think my, my outspokenness uh, uh, and and criticism of government in South Africa is is warranted if you just look at this continuous uh, you know decreasing uh, performance of of government. So so yeah, we've taken some flack for that, but uh, I hope that I've given you um, you know a, a bit of a, a balance in 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 why we are so outspoken, and it's really about retaining a, a you know level playing field. Uh, um, Position so, so that so that that's something that should be understood. I believe strongly in in capitalism, and the critical role that business can play. I'm very proud of of being a capitalist and uh, and creating jobs and sustainable um, job creation is important. Reducing inequality and alleviating alleviating poverty, and uh, I will fly that flag uh, because I really believe 
um, mining is good. Um, and um, and we need to promote mining uh, even more than than we we do. Um, so so I suppose if I summarize what I've just said, we we've taken back our right to manage the business. Uh, we are appointed to, to manage it on behalf of our shareholders, and you cannot have unions and government uh, uh, determining, uh, um, you know, what your priorities are. And they're all stakeholders, and and um, we have to um, let's say manage that. Um, one other thing that I would say is um, we we constantly work on winning the hearts and minds of our employees uh, through our what we call our cares values. And cares is 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 the um, um, the C is for commitment. It's one of our values. The A, um, the, the, the A R and the E and the S uh, also represent uh, words, and um, and it involves acting uh, in a balanced way, which uh, which again I think indicates uh, our our credentials. Um, as you've uh obviously just described you clearly built a substantial company over the last sort of 10 years um, and you've obviously been at the helm with one of the best shareholder returns compared to other uh, precious metal peers over a 10-year period and dur during the time when so many mining companies have left South Africa again what what importance is that for you and the business to obviously protect your shareholders yeah so so um i've given you some some taste of um of how we how we operate um and uh, how we 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 do what is right and maintain a, a balance between all stakeholders and 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 i think the 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 theme that um, you you are referring to here is about what we call stakeholder uh, capitalism. So um, you you can't you can't allow any particular stakeholder uh, to abuse another one. And 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 management management's uh, responsibility is to find that fair balance. Uh, um, the the days of shareholder primacy, in other words, where everything was about what you are returning to shareholders, is is history. Um, obviously, shareholders are very important. And um, and and they own the company. They appoint appoint management, but they also expect us to look after all um, um, stakeholders. So um, stakeholder capitalism and and our our relationships uh, with organised labour in the US and Europe, as I said, are good. Um, the unions in South Africa still have to find this this balance between commerciality and 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 socialism and i explained how we how we dealt with that but that's a very important part of ensuring that you you deliver um what what is you know you described as leading returns to um your your shareholders and if you approach this in this um balanced way uh it creates more value and and um the the symbolism that we have developed as a business ethos um, is the Mdoni tree, and you can see it in my backdrop. Um, it, it's a it's a powerful illustration of a, a an ecosystem of shared value, and um, um, the roots are our values. I mentioned our cares uh, values, commitment, accountability, respect, uh, enabling, and safe production. The trunk is the workforce, which is the people of our business. They give it strength. And, and direction and the canopy represents all the stakeholders and, and the fruits are the benefits that uh, all stakeholders will receive. Uh, one, one important aspect is if you look at that tree carefully, you'll also see the environment uh, in, in the canopy. And, um, and, and we then know what, um, what those fruits of, um, so if the tree is healthy, it will, it will produce fruit. And and of course we know what the the fruit is for each stakeholder in terms of creating, uh, let's say, superior shared value for all stakeholders. And uh, and of course that happens when the 
the company is 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 profitable and um, sustainable. And and this uh, this is what I mean by stakeholder capitalism and the critical role that business plays in in alleviating poverty and ensuring um, you know equality. Um, and all all the tree needs to to deliver this economic value. Uh, especially in South Africa, is um, some fertile soil and and a strong flow of nutrients. And, um, um, you know, that's mainly in the form of creating an investor-friendly legislative environment that's conducive to growth, uh, efficient, fair and timely administration of regulations and and so on. So so if you, you know, and, and... Many, many countries around the world, such as Canada and Australia uh, and the U.S., uh, to a large extent have that fertile soil, and that's why uh, companies prosper in that environment. Uh, we we operate specifically in Europe, the U.S., and South Africa, and South Africa needs a lot more nutrient uh, to be put into the soil. Um, but like, as I say, um, it's on this basis that we run our business um and and why we can deliver the returns we 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 do is 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 taking account of all stakeholders and having a different style for different regions of course the style i've described for south africa doesn't work in the us or europe you have much more mature and uh, and and more balanced uh, stakeholders so um i am spending a lot of time sharing with you our views on South Africa because that's where the bulk of our business is. Um, so at the beginning of 2021, you t- uh, took the unusual step of evolving from a precious metals company with gold um, and PGM assets into a truly diverse play by adding a third leg uh, to the stall, moving into battery metals, uh, which makes you as a, I suppose, unusual and unique company, as you as you have highlighted, what drove you to that strategy, um, and where to from here? Yeah, thanks, Rob, and and that's a good uh, a good way of describing what we've done. <clears throat> so so when we set our sights on diversifying in into PGMs, we didn't um, we didn't do it in a in an informal way or in a knee jerk way. We completed uh, an in-depth analysis. In fact, if you look, uh, we spent about two years uh, doing due diligence on the PGM markets and and forecasting the evolution of the the automotive sector because, as everyone will know, uh, most of your demand for for platinum, palladium, and rhodium um, is, is determined by how the automotive industry will evolve and what their demands are going to be. <clears throat> so, um, so, so that that was um, that was great in, insight. And what we saw um, were looming deficits uh, towards the end of the um, the twenty tens uh, into the twenty twenties, uh, particularly for palladium, which actually drove at that time. Uh, our our entry into still water and for rhodium and um, and and certainly those have when we were negotiating for still water as an example the rhodium price uh, sorry the palladium price was less than seven hundred dollars uh, an ounce uh, as you would all know it's been well over um, two thousand dollars an ounce and and those assets are, are fully paid for you you know and. Whatever we we um, get from them in the future is is really just upside. Um, so so we we understood that a lack of investment in the PGM sector because they've been um, um, you know since two thousand and eight the global financial crisis there'd uh, been a um, a lack of investment which meant that supply would not keep up and uh, with demand fueled by uh, increasing automotive manufacturing volumes and higher auto catalyst loadings um, as emissions became more stringent, we, we could quite accurately predict um, the, the deficits and therefore make very confident entries into, um, into that, uh, that sector. Now, of course, um, all of that was useful for PGMs, but it also showed us 
that uh, and and we got to understand the role that electric power trains would make um in 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 the future and um and and we could see that battery electric vehicles were were going to experience very significant growth and and um, i want to make it clear that uh, we didn't see we don't see battery electric vehicles as a threat uh, to pgms we see them as complementary uh, PGMs, the demand for PGMs will actually evolve into the the underpin of the hydrogen economy um, as uh, as electric powertrains, uh, um, excuse the pun, get traction. But um, um, it was good. It was good background, which then allowed us also to spend another two years uh, at the beginning of two thousand and nineteen looking into the the battery chemistries. And trying to determine what we're going to be the right battery metals um, um, to get into. So um, that uh, that was useful background. Of course, with COVID and and the lockdowns that ensued, um, environmental um, let's say sensitivities uh, grew grew hugely, and we've seen a very significant acceleration of. Um, let's say carbon reducing technologies and and forward facing metals uh are key um to that so 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 we we and and to assist us because we're not uh, uh chemists um we acquired a company SFA Oxford to provide that in-depth market intelligence on battery uh, materials and um and technologies um and um and we then started making um, in quick succession, a number of uh, acquisitions. Um, and our focus is spe specifically lithium uh, and nickel at the moment. Um, certainly, um, you know, cobalt is, is a good metal, um, but we think it'll be thrifted out. Manganese, of course, is important. But our focus included um, um, focusing on lithium, and uh, we acquired... Uh, a stake in the Caliber Lithium project. We acquired the, the Sandoval Nickel Processing Facility um, in France from Aramet. And then we, we entered into a 50, uh, 50 um, JV uh, with INEA on the Rhyolite Ridge uh, Lithium Boron project in, in Nevada in the United States. And, um, and, and those projects are, are slowly but surely also turning uh, into fruition. We've just recently announced um, the board approval for 588 uh, million euros for the uh, Caliber project, which uh, will produce the greenest lithium in Europe, uh, pro if not even in the world. Uh, obviously, it's close to the markets. Um, but what we have also been doing is, is, is growing our business in the circular economies. And um, we acquired uh, a stake in, in um, the Century Zinc um, uh, facility in, in Australia through New Century Resources. Um, we also took uh, um, some time back a, a controlling stake in DRD, which is a, a tailings uh, retreatment uh, business in, in South Africa. So um, the, the company has, has more from being a, a pure gold producer uh, into, you know, metals such as PGMs that clean the air out of predominantly car exhausts, um, now into the battery metals, which is going to obviously underpin the battery electric vehicles. And um, and and we probably um, have the greenest portfolio of any mining company in terms of our focus uh, on, on metals. Um, um, so, so that... Uh, um, you know, there's been lots of smaller investments in, in we, we have a, uh, an entity called Barnick Cube, which we use uh, to invest in small startups or almost venture capital um, type uh, of, of um, situations. Um, we've got some investments in hydrogen refueling. Um, we, we're looking at uh, um, a few other things as well, but small. Um, but yeah, that 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 is the portfolio that we we are building. We are pivoting, I suppose, into 
a green metals company with an underpinning gold and gold is an insurance policy especially in in global economic downturns as you just uh, uh, mentioned you've uh, just announced the green light for the caliber lithium uh, hydroxide refinery um can you just give us an update on the project and what the potential you see from it yeah so so as i mentioned we we took a 30 percent stake uh, for 30 million euros uh, in February 2021. Um, the Kilibur project itself is, is located in, in Finland. Um, it's one of the most significant lithium bearing areas in Europe. And uh, Finland is an attractive low risk mining jurisdiction. Um, um, it's, what, it's, it's a top five in, in the Fraser Institute. And, um, and importantly, Finland has developed a national battery strategy, uh, which of course we are very complementary, uh, a complementary part of, and um, and it makes an easy desti destination um, and 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 a, 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 an area where of course we can we can grow in. Um, Europe itself is is rapidly becoming a leading hub for the manufacture of batteries uh, for electric vehicles. And as I mentioned, Caliber's location in Finland is close to the market, and and the the actual production of lithium is uh, is is um, is very green due to hydropower and the mining methods. The processing is also very green, and our refinery will produce lithium hydroxide, uh, which again, as I said, is is close to the market, and um, and and that that's going to be a very important consideration uh, for, for end users. Uh, um, and I, I expect um, we will get a premium for our, our, lith our green lithium uh, that uh, comes out of uh, Finland. So we recently increased our shareholding in Caliber to 85% um, through a series of uh, uh, transactions. We first of all exercised a preemptive right to increase our shielding uh, to 50 plus one. That cost us uh, 146 million euros. And uh, we we then made a sim simultaneous voluntary cash offer um, to, to the minority shareholders of, of Caliber. Other than the Finnish Minerals Group, uh, commonly known as FMG, which is the state um, uh, representation in Caliber, and uh, we work very well with uh, um, the Finnish um, Minerals Group. Um, th that took our shareholding to just over 85%, uh, which cost us an additional 196 million um, euros. Um, FMG will uh, remain the second largest shareholder, and, and, and they have uh, an opportunity um, to, to go back to 20% should they wish. Um, and, um, and, and of course, they're very good partners to have, and uh, uh, we hope they'll do that. But uh, if they don't, it's fine. We can continue funding uh, um, the 85% uh, um, stake. So if you, if you look at some of the, the numbers, I mean, uh, um, it's, we, we've secured 85% uh, for a, a price of 366 million euros. The, the net present value of that project, uh, um, and these are very conservative um, lithium hydroxide prices of $26,000 uh, a ton, US dollars a ton. The net present value at an 8% discount rate is 887 million. So, you know, you, that, that's a 50% um, a, a uh, um, sort of in price compared to NAV. Um, at higher um, lithium hydroxide prices, of course, um, the entry is even cheaper. So it's been a very good value accretive transaction uh, for, for Sabania Stillwater. Um, the Caliber project itself will uh, produce 15,000 tons um, per, per annum of lithium hydroxide uh, at an average cost of just under $7,000, um, sorry, 7,000 euros. Um, per per ton, and and the project currently has a sixteen year life of mine, um, but we have only just started drilling um, some of the satellite deposits. So I have no doubt 
we'll be able to expand um, uh, the life of mine and increase the, the output uh, should it be appropriate. Uh, as I mentioned, total capital is, is 588 million euros and um, we are committed to 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 actually build the the refinery uh, the lithium refinery for 350 million uh, 59 million euros um, and that's fully permitted we've got some smaller permits outstanding for the uh, the mine and the concentrator but we're going to go ahead with the the actual uh, lithium uh, refinery so that that's a, a snapshot of of caliber You've made several comments in the past on the importance of a, a circular economy. Um, what is your strategy in this space? Yeah, so so Rob, I, I did allude to um, acquiring a, a controlling stake in DRD. Uh, that's a tailings retreatment business. And and when you look at it, it produces the, the greenest gold in the world. Um, you know, um, so, so getting into these tailings retreatment opportunities and circular economy opportunities is is very important. Now, um, I've mentioned New Century Resources in Australia. They produce the greenest um, uh, zinc in the world by through tailings retreatment. What I haven't mentioned is when we acquired Stillwater. Um, Stillwater is the biggest recycler of PGMs in North America. Um, and and again, th those PGMs uh, are the greenest PGMs in the world because they come come through through recycling. So so we already have a very substantial um, base based on on let's say uh, vanilla type acquisitions. Now we we do want to expand our recycling business and and the um, the nickel refinery in France will form the basis of, of taking, uh, let's say, our PGM recycling uh, into Europe, um, because you can imagine taking uh, catalytic converters all the way from Europe to North America to reprocess them just uh, involves, um, you know, a lot of uh, a lot of logistics, which you can you can shortcut uh, by establishing a facility in Europe. So we intend intend to do that. Uh, we intend to grow both um, or support the growth. We um, we are majority shareholders in DRD, and certainly we um, we support the the concept and the strategies that New Century Resources um, are driving as well. So um, we have a we have a dedicated head of recycling. So it's segmented in our business. And um, and those strategies are well developed. We do intend to get into battery recycling as well, and we're looking at a couple of opportunities there. I mentioned the Barnet Cube. The uh, it allows for these, um, let's say, venture capital type of investments with good corporate governance. We've also invested in 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 uh, in a small way in a gigafactory with Renault in France. So. Uh, that's known as Verkhor. So you you can see there's uh, there's a lot of evidence of growing um, the the recycling and um, and 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 moving a little bit further downstream than ordinary miners uh, would probably do. Um, you mentioned the, a brand of of mining um, earlier, and I asked this question to quite a few guests that come on. How do you how do you see the industry improving the image and the brand of mining? And I suppose to people that are outside of the mining industry, um, because obviously it's a primary primary source. We need it to 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 live and, and move forward. Yet a lot of people outside of the mining industry think ha have a perception of mining of it being bad, um, dirty, etc. How, what would you like the mining industry to do or what can we do as individuals and as companies to improve the image of, of mining throughout the world? Yeah. <clears throat> so, so as I said, I believe mining is good if it's done the right way. Now, now what is the right way? Um, and, and, and I think the, the bad name or, or the bad perceptions that are created are when you leave um, 
legacy environmental issues. Um, um, so the industry has got to step up its game, and it has stepped up its game in terms of uh, environmental and rehabilitation. I think the industry is also seen as exploitive, um, and and therefore the whole aspect of stakeholder capitalism, in, in other words, ensuring that not only shareholders do well out of mining, but um, all stakeholders, communities, um, um, and and so on, um, all have to benefit, and uh, and and there needs to be a model of of shared value. We've got to we've got to become more transparent. Um, I think we don't do enough to promote the very good work that is that is done. Um, in 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 the times of COVID, it was the, it was the mining companies who have large workforces and are close to communities that stepped in and did what government couldn't do. Um, you know, we have promoted it. I think we can promote it better. Um, but in, in my mind, if, if, you, if you do those things, um, you're willing to engage with st stakeholders. Um, I find that as soon as we, um, you know, you get NGOs that uh, are anti-mining, try and undermine everything you do, as soon as you embrace them, uh, listen to them, um, you know, work with them, uh, eventually uh, the, the the problem is is resolved um i i think the new the new style of mining um the shared value um the environmental sensitivity the recognition that we are not going to reduce our carbon footprint uh, as a as a society globally unless these future facing metals are mined um is recognition that we can't just ignore mining and therefore, um, those that are anti it need to embrace it, and 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 we as miners need to do better than what we've been doing. But I would argue we we're doing uh, a lot better than than what uh, many people per perceive. So um, it's about being transparent, promoting, and showcasing that mining can be good, and I believe it is good. Yeah, I've got two more questions. Um... What's the outlook and vision for Sabanian steel water over the next sort of five or ten years? Yeah, so so obviously we we are we are pivoting from being a pure gold producer um, uh, with a substantial PGM base uh, into a company that um, is is going to have a predominance of these green metals as its uh, portfolio. And um, our purpose, and 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 that's what drives each and every one of us in Sabania Stillwater is 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 being able to provide solutions uh, to reducing uh, global warming. In other words, um, providing metals that uh, can can uh, reduce carbon footprints and so on. Um, so we part of that solution. Um, as I've said. Um, um, that involves mining of metals that are, are are rare and absolutely necessary for that transition. But the there's another part of our business that is embryonic at this stage, which is we which is going to be another strategic differentiator apart from the the base of metals that I've just described. And that's we talk of energy solutions. So, um, for instance. Um, you know, uh, we haven't even spoken of uranium. We have very substantial resources of uranium, and 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 nuclear energy is is clearly now coming into its own. Um, and um, and I like to think of nuclear batteries, not these large nuclear power stations that are expensive, difficult, uh, and and of course under certain conditions earthquake conditions, tsunami conditions can be dangerous. Um, but these small modular reactors are intrinsically safe and um, and that's clean energy. Um, that's that's part of our energy solutions thinking. Uh, you know, renewable energies um, or, or technologies rely on the wind, which doesn't blow all the time. Uh, they rely on the sun, which doesn't shine all the time. And um, there's not a lot of work that's been done on on let's say grid grid scale storage uh, schemes, um, vanadium is 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 an important part of uh, providing solutions to that. So is antimony, um, 
And you'll see, even though we talk of energy solutions and, and we do intend to get into that business slowly but surely, uh, it's all underpinned by um, metals and understanding their, their, their uses. So um, if you had to say in the next five to 10 years, what would we look like? Well, I would say, uh, simply put, as a mining company, we'd probably be 10 times bigger than what we are now. But that will only be 10% of the overall value of the company because our energy solutions business is going to really thrive and grow in this environment. And lastly, um, what does Neil Froman legacy want to be? What do you want to be known for in the mining industry? So I suppose I suppose the ultimate goal is is to build a class leading business um, that, uh, as I've, I've I've shared now many times, that shares value for all stakeholders in in an appropriate manner. I'm not uh, I'm not being a socialist. I just uh, I just think that we need to share more value from natural resources. Um, and um, uh, I'm I'm very. I'm very comfortable with um, the successes in our company that will take that that forward. Um, so, so in terms of specific legacies, uh, uh, I suppose a company that is sustainable, um, that is is modern in its thinking, that has got a dynamic strategy, um, and and I suppose the symbol that represents all this is the tree you see behind me. If uh, if 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 that's my contribution to 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 mining, um, that will be a big achievement when I look back on my career. So this uh, this stakeholder capitalism tree behind me is is hopefully my legacy. Neil, really appreciate your time. Thank you for being our three hundredth guest. Um, there's a lot of insight there and a lot of lot to take away and. Um, I'd like to obviously congratulate you on your success so far, and I'm sure I'm sure the next five or ten years are going, as you mentioned, are going to be uh, even greater. So, like I said, really appreciate your time on coming on. Um, if our audience wants to follow follow the company, um, what are the best ways um, to follow the progress? Well, well, certainly we've got a very good <clears throat> website. Um, um, so I would urge them to 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 look at that, and and then of course they can they can always link up uh, more formally to the company. So um, through our investor relations uh, links, um, they can get uh, information hot off the press. Great, thank you for your time again. Hope you enjoyed listening to that episode. There's a lot, like I said, a lot to take away from that. Appreciate your continued support. Like I said, we. have We've uh, got to 300 episodes so far. Um, next goal is to 400 and then 500. Um, so really appreciate your continued support. Please keep sharing this, uh, this, this podcast, this particular episode and other episodes um, across the world to other, other mining, people within the mining industry to help, I suppose, help the mining community, help educate them, understand what else is happening in the mining industry across uh, different countries uh, across different commodities so it, it helps empower people um and and learn learn things from people like neil um who've been in the industry for a long time um there seems to be a a, a lot of older generation leaving the industry um and we need to we need to learn from some of these people so hopefully this platform is is doing uh, a little bit to help that so until next time Happy mining.